What's going on YouTube? It's Q back here again with another video for you. In today's video, I'm here to introduce my new family vehicle, my wife's family vehicle, that we picked out, the 2025 Buick Invista ST. So this is going to be the cheapest luxury car, luxury in quotations, that you can get in the States here. It's more of a premium brand, not true luxury, but it's from a luxury brand or it used to be a luxury brand, but it's more so premium than luxury. This is going to be the cheapest you can get. And then my wife, she got this based on looks alone. She did like the way it drives. She's not a speed demon, doesn't need handling. So this is going to fit the bill and it's going to be at a great, it's going to be an exceptional value. So if you haven't seen, I reviewed the Chevy Trax. This is going to be the mechanical twin of that one, but a little bit nicer because it's a Buick. So if you've been following the channel, you'll see that we've been cross shopping a lot of vehicles. I've been reviewing some cars that I wanted her to get. My main top runner was the Mazda CX-50, but we ended up with the Buick. And this is a, a stupendous value. So I personally wanted to get a Lexus IS350, maybe a Lexus, I uh, forgot the one that's smaller than the RX, or the Mazda CX-50. But this one is going to be a superb value compared to all of those. I'm about to jump into that in just a moment here. But before I do, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, browse the channel, Let's jump into it. So what is this Buick Invista? It's a new model for 2024, kind of slots down there with the Buick Encore, but this one is a little bit bigger. Like the tracks grew in size, as did this Invista, which I said they're rebadged engineering. So it's gonna be the same thing. And it comes in a few different trims. You got the base, we got the ST model and it does have an Avenir, which is gonna be the top of the line. The reason you can tell the difference between the Avenir and the ST, the ST is obviously gonna have the badge on it, but the Avenir has the brushed chrome, brushed aluminum wheels, and like all the chrome around the windows, things that the normal demographic of a Buick buyer would be in love with. We don't like that as much, so we got the ST. And for the 2025s, the ST badge moved from the back of the hatch to the side down here. You're gonna also see it up front in the grill. This really does give Baby Ura's vibes to me. So it looked like they, they kind of jocked off Lambo on that. But this is gonna be a nice total package for an everyday driver. It's a subcompact vehicle, but it's large though. It's kind of large to be a subcompact. It's like a compact size vehicle, like maybe your your Mazda CX-5 or the, the Honda CRV, Toyota, RAV4, those types of vehicles. It feels about that large. So the price that we pay for this is gonna be, well, the price that it was was $29,300. And if you know me, you know that I always get my employee discounts on my American made vehicles. So the employee discount brought it down to about 27. This is the lease. The lease is going to be like $4.30 a month with $0 down at the time that we got it. I've been sitting on this car for over a month now. I just haven't made a video on it yet because I wasn't that enthused about it. I haven't really driven it as much. But my wife, she loves it every day. She, she likes it, looks back at it when she's parking it. So this, is, this does it for her. So what options did we get on here? We are going to have, this is fully loaded, by the way, for the ST model. It's uh, going to have four collision warning. It's going to have the adaptive cruise control. We do have a package called, uh, I don't know what the package calls, but we got a sunroof. And we also have these 19-inch upgraded wheels. So it comes in the package together. You get the sunroof, you get the wheels, you get the wheels, you get the sunroof. So that's going to make it look a little bit better. We also have like a wireless charger up in here. We'll go on the inside in just a moment. Um, a power lift back which let's start back there real quick so I can give you a show around back there. This is not gonna be a full in-depth review, but I just wanna show y'all what we twerking with over here. I and mean, then we got the rear uh, safety parking systems, power lift gate, can't even get that on the tracks. Very spacious back here. And we do have a little donut down there. We also like the roll bounce. Show y'all the back seat real quick. Some design cues, not sure why they got these little ripples in there. It looks cool. I thought it was a window at first. Back seat is going to be quite spacious. The seats aren't, don't have as much as design as the front seats do, but I'll show you all that in just a moment here. Enough to fit three people. See what it's like with me getting back here. Will I whack my head? Yep, just a little bit. But once I'm back here, super comfortable sitting behind myself. Got like three inches of knee room in front of me. Not a whole lot going on back here. 
do have a USB A, USB C charging port, no vent. That's all she wrote. Let's move on up to the front seat. The front seat, like you, you don't even get this without the upgraded packages that we get, like the the passive entry. So we do have that on here. Coming on up to the front, we're gonna notice more of this blue stitching. It's like a royal blue. And looking at the seats, we got ST stitched up in here. Somebody might say it's not a true luxury vehicle. I say shut up. It's a premium vehicle, but we do have these stitches coming all throughout the seats. The back isn't as fancy as the front, but the front is much nicer with the stitching. Royal blue. I don't know why they chose that color, but it is what it is. We also have a button to release the power lift gate. I'm not sure why all vehicles don't have that. Something that we're missing, we don't have home link, so we got to pull in that garage door opener. GM cars, they all come with OnStar. So y'all this infotainment real quick. This green, you can get the tire pressure symbol off there, but from the dealership, they overinflated one of these tires, so now my wife is leery about it, so she wants to always see what the tire pressure is. And as she should, we did get a tire protection on here, so if we do have any hazards on the tires, we're protected with that. The infotainment, uh, not much to write home about. I don't care for it. It's not the fastest, so the economy is... City is going to be 2832 on the highway. We've been averaging 28 miles per gallon, which is pretty good. Like I said, we're, we're coming up on 1,000 miles. I'll do that review later on. Not a whole lot of menus on here either. There's only like five icons on here. Then we got these little menus over here. Traction control. Why is that up there? I guess it's maybe the last use feature. I don't know, man. I'll go over that in another video. But HVAC control, single climate up here. Got our gear selector right here our traction can no that's the automatic start stop lane keep assist so this is a pretty basic vehicle it does look good i do agree with that so this engine on here did i mention the powertrain 1.2 liter turbo and it's going to be a three-cylinder engine 137 horsepower about 160 something pound feet of torque made it to a six-speed automatic power in the front wheels only but another thing with this st we're going to get this stitching material on the dash i'm not going to call it leather some kind of material soft touch so it's going to be much nicer than the base models nicer than the tracks as well even the padding on the side of here with the blue stitching in it it's going to just be a more solid nicer place to be on the interior of the Invista. So this is what it's going to look like on the, the cluster up front when you take away that the tire pressure. So I found it in the menu. This is like one of the weirdest menus I've seen. Like the tire pressure here, you press it to show in cluster, and then that'll be the main focus. It's not any button you press. It's this goofy menu right here. You can change it to like your trip meter, I guess. Let's see. If we want to show that in cluster, press this button. Now to just show that same graphic on the right it'll just show it in the cluster it's a weird design cue in my opinion but it is what it is let me set it back don't want it to be something that she didn't have it set to and then when you do have something set to the cluster every all the readouts are going to be pretty tiny like the the fuel is way over there hopefully y'all can see it uh the miles to empty the miles on the actual vehicle uh dang is that the direct i don't even know what these things are it is going to have wireless CarPlay. The HVAC controls is all solid buttons. It was not the most solid feeling, but it gets the job done. Let me turn that off because it's okay to not have anything going. But it's easy to read, clear, big buttons. A sunroof, one of the things you had to have. So these Invistas do come in some nice looking colors. We do have a denim looking blue. We got like a cinnamon red, it's a gold color. The palette is pretty good, the B Buick, which I like about it, but this was the only one they had available at the dealership with the sunroof and the wheels, and they did have a blue one, but the black one just looked better. So I'll keep you guys updated on this vehicle as it'll be in the fleet for quite some time, and I'll keep you all updated if you got any problems, any maintenance, because the Blazer that we had, I did a few update videos on it, kept popping tires on that thing, but this one has got a lot more sidewall. It's going to be super efficient. It is missing some features that I wish it would have, like home link that I said. Uh, it's a couple more things. I'll point it out in a later video to see how we're loving it. And I'll get my wife's opinion on it as well, bring her along for a video. But this is going to be it, y'all. Out of all the cars that we tested, we went with the Buick.
and it is a super duper value out here. Let me know what you guys think. If you own an investor, let me know what you think about it. If you got any cool tips or tricks, definitely let me know. But I do want to do some of this Chrome Delete up on here. Well, it's not too much on this one, but the other models, Heavenly Host, we got so much Chrome on it, but they blacked out most of it, but it's just a little bit up front here. We might tint the windows, but yeah, it's a, a nice looking vehicle. Buick knocked it out the park with the design on it. So yeah, just let me know if you got any questions on it. Well, let's take it for a quick little spin. Speed out the parking lot. <laughs> it's all the way down to the floor. Not a whole lot of grunt from down low. It's adequate to not get in trouble for being too slow. It is a slow car. Zero to 60 is about nine seconds. So it's not a speed demon at all, but that torque does help it out. It's going to be a featherweight. I forgot how much it weighs. Maybe like 32, 3,300 pounds. We're on my, mules, my moon simulator right now, which I'm not trying to be on, but we're just going for a brisk little drive where I can talk about it. But the value on here is phenomenal for how much car you do get and how much cars generally cost in today's market. So there's not a lot of great deals out there to be had for new vehicles. This is one of the best ones that we could find within the budget. And my wife actually loved it. It was, she didn't like any of the cars for the most part that I was bringing to the channel. This is the one car that she did want. Another car that we did look at in test drive, mainly all Chevy. She did look at a Mach E from Ford. We looked at a Blazer EV. We looked at uh, the Trax, but this is the one that she just had her heart set on, the Invista. We looked at about three Invistas at three or four different dealerships. So this is the one that she truly and honestly wanted. So this is what we went with. We'll get her opinions and thoughts on that in a different video in the future but it's it's got enough tech wireless car play that's all you really need heated steering wheel on here that's welcome but to get these options you gotta you would think on a buick it would come with more standard features but you got the option for like i understand the heated seats but the heated steering or i understand the heated steering wheel but the heated seats though that should be standard but like blind spot you would think that would be standard on the buick and other features like uh i don't know wireless charger those are kind of standard nowadays but we had the option up for those but it's almost as fully loaded as you can get and home link it's, it's a shame that this doesn't have home link especially at this well not even at the price point that should be standard by now and i believe the avenir gets that but the looks of the avenir just don't do it for me neither but we could have blacked out some things but those wheels just did not do it but yeah the mach e it, it was a learning curve because it had the one pedal shifting on it she wasn't thrilled about that we looked at the mazas and took this to the dealership she didn't like the way they looked and i was like you don't like the way these looks i think these are gorgeous cx90 and the cx50 and the cx5 and the cx70 she wasn't uh it just didn't do it for her so tried my best to convince couldn't win that battle. The Lexus was more than what we wanted to pay. What is the name of the one that's smaller than the RX? Brain for I can't think of it right now. But we saw a couple of those. But feature for feature, that one didn't offer more. And the RX is like the true luxury experience of Lexus. It didn't make sense to pay like $35,000 for a used. That, that thing will come back to me later on. Whatever the one that's smaller than the RX. And I did a review on the new one as well. But that one didn't do it. Um, the Lexus IS, because I had the IS 500, I really like that car, but the IS was too small and she did want an SUV, but she considered the car, but it was just too tiny for our family. And the Blazer EV, we could have leased one of those for close to the price as one of these. The RS model as well, but we're not ready for an EV. Like we just, if that needs to be like a third vehicle like what my Miata is that that needs to be like a third vehicle of the channel that can't be your primary vehicle because sometimes you just got to get up and go i don't have a charger at home and fast charging out in public it takes a lot longer than what they say it does they say you can get from 10 to 80 percent in like 30 minutes it takes longer than that from my experience when i use the public charger so i don't want to have to deal with that or just not having enough charge from a 120 volt outlet so that's why we didn't go with those vehicles Broncos too looked at those they cost a lot of money a whole lot of money the Broncos really surprised me 
very expensive. Just for the a base Bronco with four doors, they're like forty five grand. But this Investor, this is it's decent. But I picked it, no. But for my family, it's safe. My kids like it. My wife loves it, so I can't say nothing about it. It's smooth. I drive it from time to time. Like I'll drop them off at school sometimes if it's just to see what it's like to drive. But it's actually very solid. Just same opinions that I had about the Chevy tracks. It transfers over to this, but this one's just a little bit better in my opinion. But that's all I got for y'all on this video. Hope you guys enjoyed this brief overview of the 2025 Buick Invista ST. And if you got any questions, you know what to do. Drop a comment, let me know, and I'll get back to y'all. And that's all I got to say about that. Y'all drive safe, and I'll catch y'all in the next video. Peace out.